It's among the great ironies in recent history, certainly the recent history of American criminal justice, an FBI probe begun to find corruption in government may simply have exposed corruption within the FBI itself. In the last few days, we've learned a great deal about a man called Peter Strzok. Until recently, Strzok was deputy head of counterintelligence at the FBI. Strzok was, first of all, deeply involved in the investigation of Hillary Clinton's private email server last year. At the conclusion of that investigation, it was apparently Strzok who changed the FBI's description of what Hillary did from grossly negligent to extremely careless. Now, the first description is a crime, the second merely a blunder. So in effect, Peter Strzok exonerated Hillary Clinton in the middle of a presidential campaign. Strzok went on to sign the document, the official document that opened an investigation into Russian meddling in the election. The very same investigation the Hillary campaign was calling for at the time, the one that has now completely overwhelmed the Trump presidency. Consider this. Consider how Agent Strzok handled two different series of interviews in criminal investigations. According to a new piece by Chuck Ross of the Daily Caller, Strzok was the agent who personally interviewed Hillary Clinton's top aides, Cheryl Mills and Huma Abedin, during the server investigation. Government notes from those interviews show that Abedin told the FBI she had no idea that Hillary Clinton was maintaining a private email server, in fact, only learned about it in the media. Mills, for her part, went even further than that. She claimed that not only did she not know about Hillary's server, she had no clue what an email server was. Here's the problem. It looks like both Mills and Aberdeen lied. In a 2010 email to Aberdeen, Cheryl Mills wrote this, quote, HRC email coming back, is server okay, end quote. So it turns out Cheryl Mills knew exactly what a server was. A year later, Bill Clinton aide Justin Cooper emailed Huma Abedin to say he had shut down Hillary's server in response to a hacking attempt. Cooper also explicitly told the FBI in his own interview that he'd discussed Clinton's email server with Huma Abedin in 2009 while that server was being set up. Any reasonable person would conclude that both Mills and Abedin were lying baldly when they told the FBI they knew nothing about Clinton's email server. Lying to the FBI, as we've all just been reminded, is a felony. Yet neither Mills nor Aberdeen was charged or prosecuted for that. Former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn must be looking on at all this in bewilderment. Agent Strzok, it turns out, interviewed him too. But unlike Hillary Clinton's aides, Michael Flynn didn't get a pass. Flynn just pled guilty to a serious federal crime. His life has been destroyed. He said to sell his house to pay his legal bills. Two cases, same crime, wildly different outcomes. Uh, how can that be? Because, Tucker, this is the weaponization of your government and mine. Um, you know, as a former federal agent and someone who worked inside the White House, um, if you're not scared of your government tonight, this case should at least tickle you a little bit and wake you up. Donald Trump's crime, make yeah. no mistake at this point, was winning this presidential election. Tucker, let's walk through just quickly how this started. This was all based on a crime, a, a, and I'm using the, air, the dreaded air quotes here, of a violation of the Logan Act, an act that has never been successfully prosecuted in the history of the Constitutional yes. Republic, which says that private citizens can't negotiate with foreign governments. Really? Why isn't Jimmy Carter in jail for going to visit the Palestinians? Why isn't Jesse Jackson exactly. in jail for going to North Korea? The answer is because nobody took or it seriously. Or Barack Obama, who's abroad negotiating global warming agreements in effect all the time, or Bill Clinton, or any <laughs> former president, you know, including Ronald Reagan. I mean, you're right. It's ridiculous. O Obama, who was just overseas doing that, by the way. This, and, and who right. started this whole thing with the Logan Act, according to multiple reports I've seen out there now? Sally Yates who then used the premise of violating the Logan Act, a largely fictitious crime no one's ever been prosecuted with, used that as a premise to go to the White House and say, well, Mike Flynn is now subjected, could potentially be bribed because he violated a crime no one's ever been prosecuted for? Tucker, this is a frightening case. And then double that down with Andrew Weissman and Jim Comey. Jim Comey, who acknowledged starting the special counsel after he was fired by leaking sensitive data to the press. This case stinks. It's a scam, it's a sham, and it should scare every American regardless of your political stripes. The branch of government most intimately related to the people, the House of Representatives, elected every two years, they represent the smallest number of people at the federal level. These are the accountable entities. They have said, the representatives of the people, the FBI, give us this information now. There is something going on and we demand as representatives of people to know it, and the FBI 
why. Not a knock on the men and women. I'll be crystal clear. They're wonderful. I've worked with them. They're great. FBI management, someone there who's been infected with the political bug, has said, nah, we're just not going to abide by that. I mean, what are you operating, a shadow government? Are you, are you serious? Can Congress has demanded answers and you're just saying, no, we're not going to do it? Aren't you worried the government is so powerful yes. right now that the most powerful man in the world, Donald Trump, the president, is still can do nothing to stop this investigation, this sham investigation for coming after him? If you're a Democrat, aren't you a little worried right now that may boomerang back on you? Conservatives have been worried about this for years. It's time for liberals to wake up and shut this disaster down. This is a political witch hunt at its worst. It's an international disgrace right now what's going on. We're being embarrassed on the global stage. This is not an investigation. This is a scam. Last summer, Strzok was abruptly pulled off Robert Mueller's team of investigators. This didn't become public for months, but it happened. All the way back in August, the House Intelligence Committee sent a subpoena to the FBI asking for, among other things, information on why Peter Strzok was removed from Mueller's team. But instead of replying, the FBI simply stonewalled and said nothing. Well, that's not just infuriating, it's unconstitutional because the FBI is not its own government. It's a single agency within the executive branch of our federal government. It's accountable to, among others, the United States Congress and therefore accountable to voters. Keep in mind, nobody elected Peter Strzok to anything. You elect members of Congress to keep people like Peter Strzok in line. Joe, given the centrality of Peter Strzok, in these two investigations, Hillary email in the current Trump Russia investigations, on what pretext could the FBI be denying these texts to Congress? Um, it's very difficult to see how they have any basis for denying Congress access to this data. Um, they publicly leaked the reason that he was fired, removed from the case. So there can't be a personnel reason for doing it. Right. And even if there were, it wouldn't matter. Congress has a right to that data. They can receive it. They have to receive it. Now, when people like Peter Strzok decide that Congress has no power over them, they're giving you the finger and they're threatening democracy. That should not be allowed. I think what's going on at the Bureau right now is very, very serious. It's very depressing for a former federal law enforcement official. This is not your mother's FBI. What's wrong with the FBI is not the average F F everyday agent. They're great. It's the management at the FBI that is the problem, and that management has not improved with the, with the arrival of Mr. Ray. I, I cannot understand how Chris Ray, the current FBI director, can tolerate having Andrew McCabe on his staff at this point, given his history and his track record. I think the FBI is in very serious trouble. It started with James Comey. Comey, the dirtiest cop in America, destroyed the FBI's reputation with his bizarre personal behavior uh, beginning way before his July 5th news conference. The Bureau is in trouble. It needs a major overhaul, and if it continues to resist Congress, I believe the contempt of Congress for the current director and other people in the agency is absolutely justified. So this is the most powerful agency in the federal government that can literally break down the front door of your house and take your freedom away, and or, they do that quite a or bit. Or show up at your house in the morning while you and your wife are in bed in order to frighten you like they did with Mr. Manafort. What a disgusting, awful display of raw political power, not law enforcement power, political power. I think the Bureau has been politicized by Comey. I don't know what Ray's going to do about it, but he has a short time frame to fix it. You have to ask yourself, given the history of everybody involved in that case, who were involved in the Hillary email server case, where they conducted a totally irresponsible, unprofessional invest, criminal investigation, and then they turn up the heat on this investigation of Flynn, the same agency. This is politics. The Bureau has been politicized. You compare the email server investigation of Hillary Clinton with the investigation of General Flynn and President Trump's aides, and what you have is a despicable politicization of the Bureau. They can no longer insist that they are fair. Peter Strzok, not the only political concern from Mueller's team, as you just heard Dan allude. Newly released emails show that a man called Andrew Weissman, who's Mueller's deputy on the Russia probe, praised acting Attorney General Sally Yates for refusing to defend President Trump's travel ban. Using his work email, Weissman sent Yates an email after Trump fired her saying, and I'm quoting, I am so proud and in awe. Thank you so much. All my deepest respects. 
In other words, Weissman despises Trump so much that he supports politically motivated bureaucratic defiance of the president. Andrew Weissman is the poster boy for prosecutorial misconduct. He was the driving force behind the indictment of Arthur Anderson, only to be reversed nine to nothing by the Supreme Court. Mr. Weissman had obtained the conviction by eradicating criminal intent from the jury instructions. Innocent people have been victimized by him. His biggest cases, as we've been talking about, reversed. Yeah, I mean, I think about all the people, tens of thousands of people who lost their jobs because of that man right there over absolutely nothing. Weissman is the perfect tool for Mr. Mueller to do exactly what he wants to do. Weissman has an, a very long history of this, and he and Mueller go way back. They've been working together for at least 20 years. Rosenstein worked for Mueller back in 1990 through 93. Comey has worked with Mueller. They are part of what I call a corrupt cabal of, of former prosecutors and now current prosecutors again who are willing to do whatever it takes to achieve whatever they want to achieve. What they do is they make promises and threats to defendants. You're oh. going to spend 10 years behind bars unless you sign this statement and the witness says, but that's a lie, and the prosecutor doesn't seem or to gonna care. Or I'm going to go after your son. It's extortion. It's bribery. When they do it, it's legal. When you and I do it, it's illegal. Nevertheless, he remains on Mueller's team, and it raises a bunch of obvious questions about the fairness of this process. How could a team comprised almost exclusively of people who hate the subject of the investigation conduct an impartial investigation, a fair one? I think that's the question, Tucker, and it's one that uh, I've been asking myself in the last several days, given what we learned about Mr. Strzok and now Mr. Andrew Weissman. This Weissman thing particularly bothers me. After all, what was at stake here, Tucker, was an order that was issued by the president, controversial though it was, I don't think it was good policy, but I think he had the legal right to do it, and I think the Supreme Court has signaled in recent days and before that it also thinks he had the legal right to do it. And here was the right. acting attorney general in the Justice Department saying, I'm not going to use, let, I'm not going to support you in this. I'm not going to make the case for what you've done here. That is a dereliction of duty. She was fired for it. She should have been fired for it. It was a huge grandstand right. place. She was widely applauded on the left for doing that. But and, and for this Weissman guy to weigh in with this with this this cringingly uh, 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 this, this email, this suck up email to her, uh, raises I think yeah. serious questions about his impartiality and whether he can be impartial. I mean, this is a man who has been accused of threatening witnesses and hiding exculpatory evidence. It is unconscionable. It is unethical. How does he even have the, the ability to practice law? Because there is a syndicate going on within the Department of Justice. Let's call it a cartel, the equivalent of the mob. It's composed of that man, Andrew Weissman, Robert Mueller, James Comey, who has now lost his job, and Rod Ro Rosenstein, who's the deputy attorney general, and the fact that all four of them are involved in the Trump-Russia investigation, it should be a cause for concern for every American. When news leaked that Attorney General Loretta Lynch held a private meeting with Bill Clinton, the famous one on the tarmac, the FBI apparently was far more concerned, according to newly released documents, with finding who had leaked the news of that meeting than it was with the meeting itself. They show that the FBI was more concerned about a whistleblower in the local Phoenix Police Department, they think, who was talking about the meeting and how it happened than about the meeting itself. And they talk about trying to find the guy, and uh, they talk about reaching out to the local Phoenix. Trying to find the whistleblower? Yeah, trying to find him. They, didn't want to, they wanted to get him. The FBI belongs to voters, not to Peter Strzok and his friends. The FBI doesn't see it that way, of course. From their perspective, you've got a right to shut up and do what you're told. And by the way, you'll stop asking so many questions if you know what's good for you. This is exactly how the secret police start when law enforcement agencies decide to do the bidding of politicians rather than pursue impartial justice on behalf of the public.